Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to have some fun with this old ThinkPad 380D here. On the right hand side we've got a CD in a tray. This is Windows 98 upgrade CD-ROM. We're currently running Windows 95 version B. And we're going to upgrade it to Windows 98 first edition. Not second, first edition. It's currently running the original install from IBM. This is an official IBM restored CD that I use to uh, get Windows 95 on here. It has all the utilities and whatnot. But I do want to upgrade this to Windows 98 for some better software compatibility. And because I've never actually done an upgrade from Windows 95 to Windows 98 or any upgrade install really uh, before the Windows XP and Vista days, we get to experience this uh, on video. So. Right, we already got a prompt here. This setup CD-ROM contains a newer version of Windows. Would you like to upgrade? Yes, we would. Maybe in a bit closer so we can follow everything that's going on here. All right, welcome to Windows 98 setup. Congratulations for choosing Windows 98, the software that makes your computer more powerful. Well, it doesn't. It makes it slower, but who cares? Let's just let it go through its checks here. Not even sure if I have enough disk space, but we're about to find out, I suppose. It's a bare IBM restored Windows 95, so I can't imagine that it's going to be particularly full. Most of the utilities aren't that uh, that crappy, so I guess we'll find out. Alrighty. All right, let's put in the key. All right, serial went in, and now we're going to prepare the Windows directory. It was a bit of a chore finding an actual serial that worked, I'll tell you that much. It's also a really handy thing to be able to type completely blind because, well, you can tell this keyboard layout is not that conventional. This laptop is originally from Luxembourg, where they use the Azurdi layout, which is typical for French-speaking countries. I don't live in a French-speaking country, so yeah, we're used to the QWERTY layout, US International to be exact. But if you can touch type, it's not that big of a deal. Checking for disk space. That's the big one. I'm not entirely sure anymore what kind of specification the system has in terms of disk. Uh, let's see here. So if existing files, they'll free up or will use about 50 meg. Yeah, we'll have a way back. 50 meg is fine. It's nothing. One of the things is that after all these years, this laptop is still holding a charge in its battery. That's pretty amazing. And it's not like you pull the plug and five minutes later it's dead. Not at all. It still lasts a few hours. I charged this laptop back up, I think, in probably January or December. It's early April now. And it was still at 80% battery. That's not bad for a laptop from somewhere around 1996, 1997. Alright, we'll just uh, let this run and we'll be back in a jiffy. And we're up to the next phase. Establishing your location. Netherlands, yes, that is correct. Startup disk, there's no floppy in there, so it's useless. Cancel. and start copying files. It does look slightly different, the upgrade setup, compared to the regular uh, one, at least from what I remember. It's looking pretty good. So I guess we'll just have to wait for this to load and uh, do its thing.
All right, the first phase of installation is now done. Going to be rebooting the laptop here. And there we go, the Windows 98 splash screen. You could probably tell by all of the different pictures that were passing through in the last couple minutes that uh, the upgrade screen for Windows 98 definitely is a bit different from the regular uh, retail install CDs. That's definitely something I noticed. And I guess it's now going to uh, set up Windows 98 for us. And we'll check if everything is working and if all the drivers are still sort of installed. We might have to hunt some down. At least, uh, I believe IBM still hosts most of these files themselves, so you can still get uh, drivers for this laptop. So we should be good if uh, push comes to shove. Mmm, the drive's sounding real healthy. I think we're almost there. It's definitely trying very hard. The hard drive indicator uh, over there is uh, blinking like a madman, so definitely there's something happening. Just while we're waiting, a little quick reminder on the specifications of this machine. It's a ThinkPad 380D with a Pentium 150 CPU and 80 megabytes of RAM. Can't remember the hard drive size off, off the top of my head. It's probably something like, I don't know, 2 gigs, something like that. Alright, here is the last phase of setup. It's driver time. On this lovely 800 by 600 TFT display. I'm very happy this has the TFT display because there's also plenty of uh, examples of these kinds of laptops of this series and 380 series that had the awful passive matrix DSTN displays. They were pretty bad. I don't really tend to keep laptops without TFTs in my collection because of that reason. They're just unusable. They're definitely a thing of the past and to some people they're very nostalgic, but I just don't find any pleasure in using them at all. Might as well just connect it to an external CRT and use it that way, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having a laptop. If you're going to have to connect it to an external display to make it usable, might as well just build a desktop, really. If you have the space for it, that is. But uh, I guess we're going to have to wait this one out as well. We'll see if uh, anything comes up. But uh, I think uh, we're on the home straight. Alright, this might be it. The very first Windows 98 boot on this ThinkPad 380D. Should be done with all the configuration steps. Maybe one little tiny bit more, but we're about to find out. Also interested to find out how fast it'll boot. Windows 95 was not that quick on this. So far it's pretty much the same. Maybe a little bit quicker even. settings, almost there. Ooh, we've upgraded to Internet Explorer 4.0. Man, we came from 3.0, so that's, that's, that's good. Again, this is the first edition of Windows 98. I think it's more fitting for an early Pentium 150 like this one. You could probably run 2nd edition just fine, but I like to put in arbitrary rules. <laughs> no really stupid reasons, but whatever. I just want to retain a similar performance metric to uh, Windows 95, so I think this uh, should be good. One thing I'm already noticing is no sound. At least no startup sound. 
What did I just tune the volume down all the way? Yep, that's it. Man, that's so 90s. All right, so well, that worked. Ooh, that's a bit laggy. Uh, no, we're not gonna register. Okay, let's find out if there are any drivers missing or everything got picked up correctly. Yep, the crystal audio is picked up fine. Series Logic, PCI, whatever. Driver got updated to 1998 version. Okay. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to do the upgrade. Because I am just not sure whether the card bus slots are not working on this laptop at all, or whether it is a driver issue. I couldn't find any newer drivers. Might have to uh, go look. I have this LAN adapter from Sweeks here. The thing is not necessarily that I don't have software for the cards, it, that they're, not, they're just not even powering up at all. That's the main issue. So we go to the ThinkPad tools here. Go to Cardworks. And then Card Wizard. Apparently that doesn't work because it's put in the config.sys file. Interesting. I guess we should be able to do this through the regular Windows card bus setup as well. PC card, PCMCIA. Both slots appear as empty. Okay. Of course we'll do a reboot. It should also give us a good idea on boot time. Go to sounds because I do want everything to be set up. Huh, there's actually a theme called or a scheme called IBM ThinkPad. Oh wow, <laughs> that is actually pretty gnarly. <laughs> All right, we're definitely applying that. that. That's good, that's awesome. Never noticed that. That's just the weirdest shutdown sound ever. <laughs> oh man, it's even OEM, that's that's the worst of it. Alright, so there's the post. Now we have Windows 98. So far about twenty seconds since the post beep. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. About 40 seconds to desktop. That's good. Yep. And about 50 seconds for it to fully load and stop threshing the disk. That's not too bad. The biggest slowdown factor is probably this hard drive, because it's really working hard. It's old and tired. Yeah, the software really requires some actual VXD files here and there. Drivers for those probably didn't get, you know, for that software didn't get migrated. That's okay. Let's just not use it. Oh, it is actually a Pentium 150 with MMX. Okay, yeah, that's a good detail. Didn't actually know that for sure, whether it had MMX or not. This laptop came pretty much without any stickers or whatever to indicate that. I never bothered to check, so that's good. Still seeing those slots is empty. I'll just pull the card. Got another card to test. We'll put it in the top slot first. And even a little glimpse of negativity on a power LED. 
Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, the PC card slots on this thing are dead. Sadly. Which is a shame because I would have loved to just put on a put a network card in here so I could transfer files to it more easily because this one does not actually work with CDRWs. So you have to burn a CDR to get software on it. So that's a bit of a shame, really. Because neither of the slots are working at all. But, oh well. At least, I got it upgraded to Windows 98. First edition, 4.1.1998. The official build number there. Manufactured and supported by IBM. Well, it's not supported anymore, but it certainly was manufactured by IBM. And I guess, on that disappointment, it's time to end this video. I hope you all enjoyed this little upgrade video on the ThinkPad 380D. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.